in the workshop a diabolical model steam engine part 15. This is the final episode in this series and it's a second steam test confirming that the engine runs much better after the modifications in the last episode. It is far from perfect, just less diabolical. Here's the engine on the bench as usual with the boiler that I'm going to use for a second time to give it a good steam test. I will pause the narration from time to time when the engine is in steam so you can hear the sound it makes and then start up again when there's something worth speaking about. Several viewers have asked me what the bolt is on the baseboard and to be honest as I know nothing about this engine I have no idea but I can make a couple of guesses. Guess number one is it something to mount a dynamo on and guess number two which I think is more likely is it a security device that you can fasten the chain to to prevent the engine from being stolen at something like a rally or similar? The last jobs I did on this engine were in the same area. I fitted six 4BA bolts to hold the steam chest in place and soft soldered the steam fitting into the cylinder for the exhaust pipe. Once again, I'm fitting the adapter to allow me to pipe compressed air to the engine. But this time, as in the previous episode, it won't be compressed air I'm piping in, it will be steam. I refitted the microcosm displacement lubricator as before. The oil and water line is not level because it's been on its side overnight. As usual, the first thing to do is check that the hand pump is working and as you can see, it's working very well and connect the gas to the gas canister. And as in the previous steam test, I'm using butane, not the butane propane mix. All I have to do now is light the burner. The small click that you just heard was me pressing the trigger on the blowtorch and now the burner is lit. Here I'm fitting the long silicone rubber extension to the exhaust. This stops the steam, oil and water from going all over the bench near the engine. You're currently watching me oiling the engine and now I'm going to look at the displacement lubricator. What I will need to do is drain the water out of the displacement lubricator but I can't do that until I have a little pressure. Whilst waiting for the steam to arrive, I'm checking the main bearings on the flywheel and everything feels okay as it should. I opened the valve on the boiler and also opened the valve at the bottom of the displacement lubricator. This forces out all the condensate. As soon as I see any oil appear in the small pipe at the bottom, I shut the valve. Here it comes. There we go. First of all, I shut the valve at the bottom, then I shut the steam valve because I'm going to take the cap off the lubricator to put some more steam cylinder lubricating oil in it. It is important to make sure you shut the valve before you do this. Once I've fitted the cap securely, I opened the steam valve. There's not a lot of steam in the boiler, but there's enough to make the engine work. The first thing I noticed was a steam leak on the piston rod gland. I shut off the steam to stop the engine so I could tighten the gland securely without injury. This is not pre-rehearsed. What you see is happening in real time as the steam test was underway. It's never a good idea to do anything on a steam engine like tighten the gland up when the engine is running, particularly when it's running on steam. It's two for the price of one. Not only could you get injured by the mechanical forces, you will also burn yourself. Once I tightened the valve rod gland, there was less steam leaking from this area. I stopped the engine to raise some steam and now the boiler is happily blowing off at 60 pounds per square inch. Time for a pause in the narration to just let the engine bed in. I'll be back soon. I'm taking this opportunity to carefully tighten up the 4BA bolts holding the steam chest in place, being very careful not to over tighten them.
Because the engine isn't wasting as much steam as in the previous steam test, I did notice that the water level remained quite high in the boiler most of the time. I only had to use the hand pump near the end of the test as the water level naturally dropped. I noticed a leak where the steam fitting screwed into the steam chest cover. This was fixed by applying some Loctite 542. And now the only steam around the engine is when I hold the steam exhaust pipe near it. Surprisingly, there's a very small leak around the exhaust fitting where I soldered it into the engine. Near the end, I will show a top tip for fixing things like this. This engine still sounds like a machine gun, but it's come a long way from when this piston was fitted in it. And that really is it for the steam test and almost the end of the series. I'm now running the engine using compressed air to blow all the water out. And now an extra bonus it's top tip time. This tip is a bit of a bodge, but it's a very quick way of sealing slight leaks around fittings like this one. What is this wonderful substance that I'm applying? Well, it's the very thin cyanoacrylate adhesive called superglue. Always remember to remove the excess because it's very runny and never use it on fittings that you need to separate. And here is the final top tip time in the final episode of the series. When I turned the gas off, the water level in the water gauge was right down at the bottom nut. And now, almost miraculously, the water level is showing as being three quarters full. And no, I did not use the hand pump. All I did was fill this square tank with water, close the steam tap, and wait until the boiler had cooled sufficiently for all the steam inside it to disappear, to be replaced by a vacuum. That causes the water from the tank to be sucked into the boiler. And now, to conclude this episode, a final run using compressed air to blow out all the water. The engine is sat on two pieces of Scotch-Brite, and that's why it's quieter. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.